And we welcome you into Pioneer Basketball with Coach Devin Carter. I'm Brian Staten and Coach Devin Carter's the Pioneers embarked on, well, it is the gauntlet for this Pioneer Basketball team right now playing teams that are only in the upper echelon or therefore the top six in the South Atlantic Conference. And it has been that way over the last month and it has continued to be that way over this past week. We were joined by Pioneer coach Devin Carter, whose Pioneers went to Lincoln Memorial this past week and then had the opportunity to host Catawba to start the second half of the South Atlantic Conference season. So let's start right there, the first half of the South Atlantic Conference season. Um, you know, riding a seven game winning streak in, in all of that from the end of 18 to the start of 19, um, played some good competition, played them well. I'd say you'd had to be proud of your team, and I still don't think that you believe you've played your best basketball yet. Yeah, definitely proud of our team just, you know, to be able to put that many wins together consecutively um, is tough to do. And then obviously to go and, um, you know, kick off 2019 the way that we did, uh, was really proud of that. You know, during the year you, you, you hit adversity with different things, and, you know, it's always um, injuries illness and eligibility mm -hmm. and those are things that you always have to overcome uh, no matter what team you are or, or who you are and I felt like our kids did a great job with that and, and, and taking care of business there so really proud with how we kicked off uh, 19 uh, obviously I felt like we needed to start like that uh, because like you said we're in that gauntlet period right now in the sack that's uh, unforgiving yeah and the pioneers finished up the first half of the South Atlantic Conference schedule with a road date in Harrogate to Lincoln Memorial University. And if you've been following the Pioneers this year, you know that they're not a strong road shooting team by percentage this year, but they are a very testy, a very feisty, press you type thing, a uh, team that goes and forces a lot of turnovers and scores in transition, but just don't shoot well. And yep. against, Her against LMU in Harrogate at the Tex, a big wide open arena, you start the first half by shooting 50%. The, the issue was they shot 58 percent that was very that was against the norm for, for your coach team absolutely uh felt like just from a um defensive standpoint i felt like we've lost we lost a couple of their shooters um you know early on i think the thing that was more frustrating than anything is we gave up a lot of straight line drives and uh, gave up some straight line drives they got some easy layups around the bucket and then also too we didn't do a great job of finishing off possessions. And, you know, when we did force a contested shot, they usually got a second opportunity at it and uh, obviously dug ourselves in a deep hole in that first half. Yeah, down 15 in that first half to Lincoln Memorial, who, by the way, had gone into the contest winners of five consecutive games. So this is a team that was playing well, and Emily and Rachel Griffith were shooting the basketball well, and they were getting lots of help inside in the paint from Kirkpatrick. It was a team though that went down 15 in that first half. What, what seemed to trigger the comeback? Because you definitely had one. Yeah, I had a comeback. I felt like our kids, um, you know, for, for whatever reason, um, you know, felt like we were just a tad bit sluggish on the start. And then obviously once we saw a couple uh, shots drop, I felt like our energy picked up and we were able to get stops and, and get a couple of um, easy points in the paint. And then obviously, you know, uh, Kendria Duke getting early foul trouble. Mm -hmm. Having her the second half was really big just for the mere fact of, you know, she was able to get us some easy buckets to start. And then once people start collapsing on her, she's able to spray the ball out. And, and you know, a lot of our sh shots were wide open because she drew so much attention. It was kind of an inside out deal. And uh, Kendria did a great job of getting the ball out. And we had some kids step up and knock down some shots. Duke was 0 for 1 in the first half, played a minute and 39 seconds in the first half. Finished the contest 6 of 11. So six of her last 10 shots went in. 16 points in the game. Was probably the best player on the floor just in the second half alone. But the Pioneers, who were down 15, went up 8. And then LMU kind of had that we're not going to go away. We're at home as well and started knocking down a little more shots. Yeah, started knocking down shots, contested shots, tough shots. Credit to them. Uh, did a great job of really, um, you know, trying to, to, to speed the ball game up a little bit. You know, um, you know, obviously we don't mind playing fast, uh, but they got a couple of quick shots uh, in, in the course of their offense. And, um, you know, we were up eight. And then next thing you know, we were – Bang, bang, we were in a tie, uh, yeah. tie ball game. So uh, credit to them. They, they made some big-time shots, contested shots, um, you know, shots that, you know, we can test and we say, hey, if it goes in, it goes in. But, you know, if those are misses, uh, we're able to get the rebound, and all of a sudden you're looking to build in that lead. So 
Uh, those twins are, are, are really good for a reason, and um, they knocked down some crucial shots to bring them back in that ball game. Rachel Griffith started it with probably a 23, 24-foot three-pointer. Kendall Cottle with the, t the deficit eight, uh, the two threes made it a two-point game. Then it was back and forth from there. So 14 lead changes, somewhere in the neighborhood of six ties mm -hmm. in the contest, and you're up one, and there's seconds remaining in the contest, and uh, they get a timeout, advance the basketball um, to the to the front court, and then and then it happened. It's a tough way to lose a game, but I felt like you guys had it well defended. Yeah, um, it's one of those things that uh, you know. Um, after that ball game, uh, was physically sick for our kids. I was I was I was physically sick um, because number one, I, I've never lost a ball game that way, um, and I felt like our kids fought back, and 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 they deserve that one, and so. Um, you know, you can send stuff in and do anything. It's not going to change anything. But I was just really hurt for our kids because I felt like, like you said, I thought we defended it well. I thought the kid caught the basketball. She didn't have an angle to shoot it. She threw it off the bottom of the backboard. Um, you know, I watched it over and over again. Lovely Lockler is going backwards. Uh, there was no contact there. Uh, threw it off the bottom of the backboard. But uh, a foul gets called, and um, credit to them, they went to the foul line and, and, and knocked down both. Um, on the you know other end of the spectrum, uh, she knocked down both. We inbound the basketball with Callie Patterson, and um, you know if, if 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 all things are equal, I felt like she got the same amount of contact. Uh, you know, didn't get the call, and and uh, you know uh, walked out with a one point loss. It was just tough, just for the mere fact I felt like. Our kids did everything we asked them to do. They battled through adversity. Yo-Yo made a clutch shot. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, to have the game decided like that was really tough uh, just for the mere fact of our league is so tough as it is to win at home. But to win one on the road is like, a, is like gold. Mm -hmm. And um, was pretty confident that we had done everything we needed to do to battle back and get that one on the road. And then, you know, uh, to have it uh, – yanked away from us uh, just from a uh, you go so high and then to get so low uh, on that call was really tough. LMU battles back. They get a 76-75 win. Emily Griffith hits two free throws with 2.2 seconds to play in the contest. And LMU got their seventh win in the South Atlantic Conference. And for the Pioneers, they're coming off a tough loss um, against Wingate. Good win against Newberry. Then a tough loss against LMU going through this gauntlet period. Then we start the second half of the conference season as Catawba was coming into town and arguably your your worst performance uh, you felt of the year against a Terrence Baxter coached team that isn't going to make it very easy even if you're having a good day right. on the court. Yeah, and uh, TB's my guy, that's my dude, um, does a great job. Uh, his team takes on his personality. Uh, like I said, he was a really good player, uh, played for Dave Davis at Pfeiffer and uh, this whole pressing thing, they were, they were elite at it. And, um, you know, Coach Davis has that style that he's done for years. And Terrence Baxter was a phenomenal player, really tough, really gritty, would crawl in you, as animated as he is on the sideline. That's how he was mm -hmm. as a player. And, um, but, you know, one thing that, you know, his kids do, they play extremely hard. And then they've gotten better. Um, you know, some of those kids that were knocking down three-pointers, Webb and, um, you know, uh, DeShazo Gardner. and Gardner and those kids, you know, uh, they weren't shooting that ball as well earlier in the year. And as the year has gone on, they've just gotten better and better and better. And uh, so I knew going into that ball game, it was going to be a tough challenge for us because they could play so hard. And, uh, you know, those kids are all bought into his vision there. Let's take a look at the highlights. Tusculum versus Catawba it was a uh, overtime thriller here from Pioneer Arena. And early for the Pioneers, it was uh, two free throws made by Talia Barnes had a big game back in December against the Pioneers, but then it was a 15 to nothing run, and the Pioneers, uh, you guys were off and running, and everything seemed to be very well and seemingly in control. Yeah, uh, just felt like we got off to a great start. I felt like our kids came out with a lot of energy. Uh, felt like they got a, got uh, a lot of enthusiasm to start the ball game, and I think they knew uh, firsthand that. Uh, what Catawba was capable of and that if we didn't come out with a mindset of uh, uh, focus, if we didn't come out with a mindset of toughness, uh, that it was going to be a long night. 
And so we were able to go ahead and uh, get off to a great start, which, which is what we needed. We knew they weren't going to lay down. Uh, every, everybody makes runs. Um, and sure enough, they responded with a run of their own. But I was just proud of their kid, our kids for being able to stay the course in that matchup. Yeah, you're going to the 15-0 run. They're going to the 15-2 run after Webb hit the three in the corner. And then all of a sudden, it's just back and forth. Thought that uh, Stanbeck was very good coming in off the bench. Uh, and getting them going as well. And then the outside shooting from Webb was very good. Of course, we see Marta Rodriguez. We don't normally see her knock down a lot of shots, but yeah. in this game, she did. Yeah, she, she gave us a huge boost. You know, the thing sometimes with uh, freshmen is is that they get into uh, our league and um, people say, well, man, this is just a, you know, a Division II league. The thing about it is, is uh, these top teams in our league if you go through uh, over the past three or four years, you look at how many Division One teams we've beaten as a league. Uh, it might, you might want to change that sentiment around. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. might say, "Man, that's just a Division One team with a good budget." Uh, but our league is really tough and competitive. And I think the thing is, is that some kids have trouble ad uh, adjusting to the speed of the league. And uh, Marta Rodriguez is going to be a really good player for us. Um, you know, once the game slows down for. And once she understands that, hey, man, I'm good enough to get this done, she has a chance to be really good. Uh, you know, first year, had some games where she's knocked down multiple threes. Uh, the thing with her is just, you know, it's about her confidence. And when she plays with confidence, she gives us a, a, a great boost coming off the bench. And uh, her three-pointer was timely uh, in that first half because uh, Catawba was making a run there. She knocks down the three. And then all of a sudden, uh, we're able to withstand uh, their run a little bit. In the second half, obviously, it's going back and forth. Uh, Mia Long, who has improved her three-point shooting tremendously, hits two in a row. Callie Patterson goes down in this fourth quarter. Jazz Williams hits a huge three-pointer as well. Um, and then Catawba made their run back, you know, with a five-point deficit. DeShazo hits a three, yeah. and then another three is hit from the uh, top of the key. Uh, you rely on a free throw to get to the overtime just to at least force that overtime. Yo-Yo had her game. Yeah. Uh, you know, 11 points in the game, and all and 10 of them all scored for the Pioneers in the overtime came yeah. from her. Uh, yeah, we did bank in a three, but yeah. then again, I think she's earned that. She deserved that because she's putting in the effort in the gym, too. She's putting in the effort, and then not only that, um, you know, not only is she putting in the effort, but she's a kid that I feel like is one of the best glue guys in the league. Um, she defends the other team's best player. She's at the top of our press. Uh, she very rarely has a sub uh, mm -hmm. in a ball game. And so you love to see great things happen like that for her um, because uh, she's a senior and uh, we needed her to step up at that time. And uh, she stepped up and made some phenomenal plays. Uh, like you say, when you put the work in, sometimes the basketball guys just bless you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that bank will take it. Uh, it's better be uh, lucky. Uh, then sorry, and uh, she knocked that down, and, and uh, we needed all 10 of those points. Uh, and then also, you know, she was able to hold DeShazo and, and some of those other guards in check uh, in that overtime as well. So uh, couldn't be more proud of Yo-Yo. Uh, you know, I think since she's been here on our team the last two years, uh, nobody's played more minutes than her, yeah. and uh, that's for a reason, uh, because she's our glue. She keeps us together. Fifth in the league this year in minutes played in the South Atlantic Conference and seven games now she has been over 33 points in a contest. Before all of that, we saw a lot of the highlights from the outside shot from Mia Long and then a drive by Mia Long. But really to keep the Pioneers in it, Kendrea Duke had another solid game. Talia Barnes went off on Tusculum back in December. Yeah. And I felt like not only did she do the job defensively on her, obviously she did the job offensively as well. Uh, Garris came in and played well for Catawba, but I mm -hmm. just felt like Duke had an advantage. She had some second chance opportunities. We don't re out rebound many teams, and you made the comment before the game: we out rebound, we win. Right. Fortunately, you got it right. Right. Because you know, rarely, you know, five times this year we've out rebounded the opponent. That happened to be the fifth. Right. And you know what? I, you know, when we go through and uh, obviously with having to move people around and. Um, you know, losing two centers uh, this year and D and uh, Tory, we knew rebounding was going to be a challenge for us. But the thing is, is that, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, I got to look back and say, man, we got four guards on the floor, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. That doesn't alleviate or make an excuse for, you know, how we rebound the ball. We still got to rebound the ball. Um, but you combine 
uh, what I call, we got to take away second chance opportunities. When we take away second chance opportunities, we rebound fairly well, then the press becomes the difference. And that's what, you know, we try to achieve uh, in every ball game. We want our pressure to be the difference. And uh, just so happened in that ball game, uh, we were able to, to, you know, win the rebounding battle. We were able to win, uh, you know, the, the turnover battle as well. And I just felt like when we do those two things, we're a really tough ball club to beat. Uh, Kendria Duke, obviously, uh, when she brings her A game, she gives us that presen presence inside. Mm -hmm. And then if you combine that with the rebounding and, and the turnovers, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be really tough to beat us. Pioneers get the overtime win against Catawba, exact some revenge back in December, and off to a good start to start the second half of the conference slate. But up next for the Pioneers, one of the top teams in the country, the top team in the conference, along with Newberry. We'll talk about that when we continue after this. The Pioneer Basketball Show with Pioneer Coach Devin Carter. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Back into Pioneer Basketball with Pioneer coach Devin Carter. The Pioneers have a couple of big uh, games going on this week as well. We talk about the gauntlet staying in and all the opposition over the last eight games have been in the top six in the South Atlantic Conference and that will continue with a little bit of a break in the conference schedule and a non-conference game to come. But Anderson and Newberry, and you're talking about two teams that have been or are currently ranked in the nation and uh, two of the top teams in the, well, one of the top teams in the South Atlantic Conference and one team that is just ahead of you now in the South Atlantic Conference. So Anderson going to be tough. you got arguably the uh, two, uh, the biggest one-two punches in the league. Yeah. And then you've got Newberry, who arguably has maybe the two biggest one-two punches in the league. Yeah. you got a good competition this week. For sure. And uh, the thing with Anderson is they do such a great job uh, defensively as well as rebounding. At one time, I think Newberry was number one in the country in rebounding and Anderson was number two. Mm -hmm. uh, they do such a great job defensively and then they do a great job of finishing possessions. And then, like you said, uh, you know, we've seen firsthand what Ace Easter and, and Mullenhauer can do. Um, Ace Easter, uh, last ball game out, has 47 points, and <laughs> 13 of 14 from three. Uh, both sack records. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, obviously you got Mullenhauer, who was National Player of the Week. Um, you know, uh, she does a great job of just um, creating her own shot. Um, 16 points against us in the third quarter down at their place. Yeah. Um, you know, and so she went off and uh, two, two elite basketball players, and they're long, they're athletic. Uh, and as long as you have those two, you're going to have a chance to win every ball game. So our work is going to be cut out for us. Um, you know, they, they always play hard. They always defend. You know what you're getting from them. They're not going to change what they do for you or anything else. Uh, they're going to come in and be Anderson. And uh, the thing about it is they're really good at it. So definitely a challenging week there. And then uh, obviously going down to Newberry, yeah. which I think is the toughest place to play in our <laughs> league. No disrespect to anybody. I just think that's the toughest place. Um, I've never seen a team go there and make shots. And uh, so, you know, when you go there, uh, you know, scoring the ball is going to be a challenge. And then obviously, um, Meg Essex, who, you know, we we talked about before, uh, one of the elite posts in the country, and uh, Shelby Britton, who never gets tired and uh, who can shoot the lights out. So uh, definitely going to be dealing with uh, one-two punches this week. And, um, you know, hopefully uh, we'll be healthy and, and, and we'll rest up and, and be ready to go. Anderson riding a huge winning streak coming in, and the Newberry Wolves trying to end a dismal uh, middle part of their South Atlantic Conference schedule, and then they get a big home run as Tuscaloma will come to town on Saturday. Join us on Saturday on the Pioneer Sports Network. You can listen online through jewel955.com or through tuscalumpioneers.com. Just go to the composite page, top of your website, and find live audio in the Tusculum women's game against Newberry. It works for the men's game as well. They'll tip it off at 2 o'clock and the men obviously at 4. And if you'd like to follow it through video, you can do so through the Newberry Wolves website as well. 
Till next week, for Pioneer Coach Devin Carter and everybody behind the scenes at the Pioneer Sports Network, like Nick Forsberg, I'm Brian Staten. Go Pioneers!